Now, I hope you don't want loads of loads of personal details like like me. National oh, no, insurance no. number and no, date. No, of course not. No, just... That's fine. Yeah. You're going to. I'll look at that. Great. I think it's the. Uh... Oh, I couldn't tell you. No, you're, you're, you're fine. Go ahead. Um, um, right, so I just have a few questions. Um, and sure. If you wanted to talk about anything afterwards, then that's Sure, okay. yeah, sure, sure. So I'm not going to give too much away, that's for sure. No, that's, that's fair. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. So I just need your name and. My name's John, and I'm a flat earther. Um, so you were one of the, the three main members of the, of the Flat Earth Society, right? Um, well, Chester Flat Earth Group. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, we're a small group. I mean, we, we've only been going for a short period of time. Um, but I think, I think there's a, personally, I think there's a, there's a reluctance on a lot of Flat Earthers to actually come forward and say, hey, I'm a Flat Earther, and I say to everyone, it's like being homosexual maybe 30 years ago when a lot of people were persecuted for being, being gay. The same thing is happening um, to people who think the earth is flat in this society where it's promoted that it's allegedly round. I mean obviously I can see the conflict. Um, so a lot of flat earthers are very reluctant to come forward. So that's why the group hasn't really kind of like grown, wow, you know, amazingly huge. But I mean, you know, it's, we, we've got someone new turning up tonight, so hopefully, and uh, we're always promoting ourselves that we're friendly and accessible. As long as there's people who, who come to us are friendly as well, you know, that's great. Sorry, I just, I just need to get a bit closer. Think, sure, sure. Just so the, the audio is right. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, you can ask the same question, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I've got the zoom. Great, the zoom super, sort of yeah. It's just so hard to get the right... The it's right the same with the chair reading, you know. Yeah, I'll just move that out. Move that well out of there. I don't know whether that helps. <coughs> Sorry, I've moved. So I can't zoom out more, it's not very good, but... <laughs> oh, they're going to train me so well on this one. I'm sure it'll be okay. I mean, if you've got a good microphone, then... Chester Flat Earth Group started because I have a YouTube channel which I do with my brother and Vic who lives locally in Chester. He um, has a YouTube channel. We, we kind of like met up just through exchange of comments and seeing videos and stuff like that. So that's how we, we got together and we, we, we decided that it would be good um, to, to actually have a community group. Um, because, um, you know, it's Flat Earth is, I mean, it's very unusual to see a Flat Earth community, actually, especially in the UK, I mean, I believe, or I understand, I should say, where the, the, there, isn't another, there isn't any other uh, Flat Earth community group, as far as I'm aware, could be wrong. But it's, you know, it's so nice because it caters for the, those members in society who just think the Earth is flat. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, people are free to start a group on uh, conservatism or labour or this or that or whatever. So, you know, I don't see a problem. Um, so, how did you hear about the, the Flat Earth? Flat Earth, it was very quickly, I'm going to run this very quickly by you. Um, two, uh, maybe three years ago, we had a solar eclipse. 
So I, after, but maybe about a month after the eclipse, or sorry, leading up to that time, I've always been interested in kind of um, alternative views as opposed to mainstream, because I've always been really dissatisfied by mainstream. I always find that uh, mainstream is just a pretense, essentially. So I've always been interested in alternative views. And um, after the eclipse, I was on YouTube and um, there was Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Clues, which I watched. And after watching the first episode, I thought, yeah, it's, it's just, so, just so simple. It just makes sense, you know. And that got, got me kind of like, you know, uh, since then it's just been Flat Earth all the time, you know, really. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it, there seems to be a deep mistrust of the government and... Um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, just surrounding flat earth. Um. Well, to be honest with you, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a, a great deal of mistrust in society. All societies. Um, whether it's the American society, the British government, British society as well. You know, if one thing that strikes me about people, and that is, if you ask people, who do you trust? Who do you actually trust? A lot of people would probably say, well, not many, maybe two, three, not even, you know, more than the digits on my hand, you know. In this society, that's kind of pitiful because it shows to me that there's an awful lot of mistrust. Yeah, we can't trust our neighbours. People are becoming more insular. Um, you know, people are becoming more isolated because they're on mobile phones, they're on computers, they're on the internet. They're not talking, being social. All of that is, is uh, um, basically being destroyed by modern technology. A lot of people don't trust their politicians, a lot of people find it hard to trust a doctor, a lot of people find it hard to trust a dentist. We all know we live in a society where it's all about money. We put, as a society and people, it's all about money for a lot of people. A lot of people put value more in money than what they do in people. I'll give you a prime example of this. Um, for someone, okay, for someone who cares for the welfare and well-being of another human being in this society, okay, they can get paid for the minimum amount possible that the law allows them to have, okay, the minimum amount, and that's for them, legally, to go and help and care for the most vulnerable people in our society, which we could say is the elderly, okay, the minimum amount of money. A car salesman can earn twice as much, twice as much. What does that tell you about society? this society we live in? It's messed up because we put more value in things, money, material goods than what we do in the very people who, um, who, who make up our society. It's, it's shameful, it's pitiful and you can understand why I don't vote and I've never voted. So how, does that, how does that link to... Uh to, um, the well, because the, the you see the thing is, this is my opinion. Okay, so don't say that it's um, you know it's held by all fat earthers or whatever. But it's my opinion that this society could be so much better. Okay, it's a lot of people would say that things need to change. A lot of people moan in this country about this, about that, about this, and, that. and yet nobody's doing anything about it. And um, to me, flat Earth is just a wake up call. To make people realise the, the truth and to make people realise the truth about their own life. How much they are lied to by, by society and by other people in their lives. I mean, pe people forget to realise that, you know, we, we all have mothers and fathers, we all have friends, we all have work colleagues, but all of these people in our lives can lie to us, whether they know it or they don't, whether, you know, whether these people are knowingly lying to us or not. You know, but they can lie to us because the information they're passing on to us can be incorrect, can be false. You know, so flat Earth really, for me, it kind of like marks a a return to the individual, so that the individual is empowered to make decisions for themselves, to trust their own judgment, um, and to form a life that is more uh, conducive to their needs and to their own happiness. When we look at the ball earth, we're told by lots of scientists that people are insignificant. We're insignificant because we have a vast universe around us. We mean nothing. And yet, when you become a flat earther, the, we, are, we are the universe. The individual is the universe. And that empowers people so much, it's unbelievable. 
So we can see that that's, you know. No, that's fine. I'm sure you can get something out of it. Slipping down every time, so I just have to adjust it. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah that's um, I can always move slightly down like this, you know. <laughs> it's cool, don't worry. I mean, um, yeah, so, so you, you believe that conventional. Well, I don't believe in anything. Sorry. That's fine, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, you see, one thing you've got to realise, and that is you live in a belief system. Okay. I, don't, I don't. You know, you believe you can get that car, you believe you can become a journalist, you believe you can do this and do that. But you could be dead tomorrow. So, where's that belief? It's it's just an idea in your head. That's all it is. So I, I don't do that. I just think well, life happens. It's, it's a lot of the time. It's all about you know living life. You know. So. There's um, what I've been learning about is um, journalist regulations. Yeah. Regulating the media. Yeah. And so ethics and morals come yeah, into yeah. play quite a bit. How do you feel? Um, um, well, to be honest with you, I think, um, uh, in what respect are you, are you, are you um, asking? Well, they had an overhaul of the uh, P uh, PCC, and they turned it now into IPSO. It's, um, it's a regulatory board for journalism. It's, um, what was the PCC? It was the Press... Um, Press Complaints Commission. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they've now replaced it with IPSO. So yeah. That's so it's, it's, but um, it's, it's all about regulating yeah. things so that uh, the press is more, um, more, more maybe more impartial and maybe yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna yeah. Just gonna stop because <laughs> I sound really dumb when I'm saying it, but it's um so it's it's to regulate the press so yeah. uh, people can't um people can't get away with. Um, Handing people in the press and they can't. Oh, you mean you mean the the reporters can't do? Yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. whole um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, world press thing, and you, you can't you can't publish certain details. You can't publish yeah, yeah. details about children. So, so you're asking what am I what my views about that? Um, I mean, because well, it sort of links back because there, there's still the morals, I think, because it seems that you've sort of turned away from the government because there's a lack of ethics and you yeah. can't really trust anybody, but it seems like there are regulations in place. But Yeah, sure, but you, you've got to realise that there's regulations that, um, that government, that, sorry, there are regulations in place that govern sorry, almost um, all um kind of bodies you know all bodies you know we're all bound by law but one thing you've, you've got to realize that it's, it's the nature of the beast it's the nature of humans in this in this society who live in this society to lie cheat um and to have all of this ill feeling you know i don't give people ill feeling you know but there are unfortunately there's a lot of people irrespective of the, how much money they earn their social status, this, that, and everything else. You know, they're filled with anger, they're filled with hatred, they're filled with bitterness and all this lot. But at the end of the day, even though you have these laws in place to restrict what people can and can't do, people will still break these laws. People will still um, weave the law to their favour because laws are... You see, the thing is, that with this society, it's, a bit, it's very unfair because people like myself don't get a say in what laws I live, I live by, which I think is crazy. Do you not think that's crazy? I, I don't get to say, you know. Um, this is my, my city. This has been built for the wealthy person, for me to walk down. These aren't my streets. These are the council streets. Uh, the pavements I walk on aren't mine. In fact, nothing in Chas you know, here or anywhere is mine. So, you know, it's, it's the whole it's the whole ethos of ownership. It's the whole eth ethos of control. It's, so your ethics and morals basically go out of the window. You know. So you know that, that's that's all I can say about the about do you, that. Do you think that scientists are sort of like government pawns in that? Well, then? you see, the thing is, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. Scientists get paid at the end of the day. They go to university, like yourself. Okay, they get trained, they get, they get taught things, they get taught that this does this and that does that. They repeat the information, you know, through the exams and through, through their postgraduate courses and all this stuff. And then they, they move on, they go and get a job and they work for other people. They get paid. In order for them to get paid, okay, money, so that they can go and 
have a car, buy their house, go on holiday, dress nicely. They need to conform. They need to do things that their employer. Sorry. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's just the. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a team oh team yeah, team. the ice bucket. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It was it was a great point. I think. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. If you want to go um, uh, go back and redo it, you, know, you can do that. No, sorry. it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I'm okay. As long as I remember my words, that's fine. Yeah, it was about uh, the. Scientists. Yeah, the scientists. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna record again. Yeah. So, um, so can you re rewind the question very quickly? Yeah, sorry. Do you think that scientists are government farms? Well, well, scientists are employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, all employees have a loyalty to their employer, the person who pays them money. Scientists are, are the same as anyone else in a paid employment. They get paid so so that they can use that money because we're in a money-driven society. Um, they use that money so they can pay for their home. They can. Buy their, pay for their car, run the car, buy new, buy nice clothes, go on holiday, and all this. So they need to conform in their job. They need to do what their what their employer is wanting of them. So whether it's to make this formula, whether it's to do this, or whether prove curvature, even that's their job. That's what they're getting paid for. Doesn't truth doesn't come into it. They're getting paid to do a certain job. So. Um, that, that would be, I don't think scientists are government pawns, I'd say a scientist is a pawn for anyone who's willing to pay them the money. And you were saying something before about the universities. Well, you see, the thing is, you see, I've done so much research over the past three years about um, you know, Flat Earth, and I've done an awful, obviously that's gotten, that's had me talking to a lot of these globe people who think, obviously, ball. When you go to university, these establishments promote the ball. You got the ball. They're going to teach you the ball. They're going to feed you the ball. All of that education is built upon the ball. Physics, gravity, and uh, what else? Um, inertial frames of reference, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's all built around the ball. And yet, how do we know that that's absolutely true? We don't. I don't. You know, when I, I've been to university, did two years, did a couple of years in psychology, and a lot of the stuff I went to universe when I was there, I look back now and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I can remember that, but I can never understand what that was about. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, was it actually true? Could it just be made up? A lot of, I'm beginning to realise that a lot of the stuff that people are taught in education is just made up. A prime example would be, a prime example would be the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now this relates back to psychology. Now the Dunning-Kruger -Kruger yeah. effect, um, I can't tell you what it is, but it is, it is a, a psychological effect. A couple of psychologists saw uh, a newspaper story, okay, newspaper article, all about a guy called MacArthur Wheeler. Now, MacArthur Wheeler was a guy who allegedly put lemon juice on his face and on his hands, I believe, or I understand it from the story, if I can remember, in the vain attempt to rob a bank and so that CCTV the camera wouldn't, wouldn't catch his face, okay? Honestly. So these psychologists, Dunning and Kruger, they read the article and they thought, mm, that's very interesting. So they built a whole experiment around that newspaper article. Now, here's the good part. You try and show me an image of MacArthur Wheeler. You would have thought a story like that, you'd have a full front page, you know. Bank robber covers his face in lemon juice and gets caught. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't long ago, you know. I can't find it. A lot of newspaper articles are just made up because there isn't any news. A lot of a lot of it, um, you know, a lot. I read the when you when I watch uh, the odd bit of TV or I watch uh, or I read the newspaper, it's the breaking news. But how is that breaking news? It's as if the it's as if the media are trying to create this create this whole um, you know you know kind of. That anything can happen, and yet it's, it's not. It's not, it's not like that. Life's not not, not like that. It's, it's all hype. So yeah. So you know. Out of curiosity, did you did you go to university at all? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did. Said I did. Yeah, I did two years psychology. Yeah. Sure. 
I, just, I, just and I, I did psychology I, when I was in the cognitive psychology bit they were talking about Mr X and Mr One and thinking well why can't you give, them, give us out their names how do I know it's not made up you know it's, it's, you see the one thing that annoys me about all of this science and that is they tell you things but they never give you any evidence to back up their claims it's like uh, it's like the um, objects fall at the same rate I'm sure you are aware of that that's the that's the in the if you go to university that's the current understanding you see a lot of the information in university only exists in the university building and that's it you come outside into the real world where you meet real people and you experience real life you can leave all that behind I'm telling you but um, you know objects fall at the same rate now I watched something on a, a YouTube video and I basically realized that objects fall at different rates the heavier object will always hit the ground first and it's just a skew of reality yeah. let's see let's see a car you know a four-door car being thrown out of being chucked off this um, say 160 meters 60 meter cliff and a football let's see what hits the ground first yeah it's going to be the car all the time the heavier object so what does a flat earth look like i don't know you tell me i've had a series online but i i'm just hoping that you know well well to be honest with you i've i've only been to a few places okay so i can only go by my own experience you know i can't talk for someone in who lives in australia or new zealand and I can't talk for someone who lives in Greenland or uh, Canada or whatever. But um, as far as I'm aware, I would. It, this is this is my opinion. Okay. I mean, um, I would say water always finds its own level. That that's a fact. I've, I've I've spoken to so many people, even glue people, and I've said I've I've said, to them, but water always finds its own level. Fill a bath up, fill up this this pint glass. You fill up a pond. Let's make it bigger. Fill up a lake. Let's make it even bigger. Water will always find its own level. So it's very safe to, you know, be able to extend that. Um, it, so in my opinion, I would tend to think that um, there's, there's an ice barrier, okay, which retains all the water. Something, I mean, when you think about it logically, a lot of people say, oh, you know, when I say to people, I'm a flat earther, you know, and they probably think, oh, you, you're a flat earther. No, the earth can't be flat. No, all the water would run off the edge. But it's this nonsensical thing to say because we have water. So how can it water run off the edge? Do you understand? Obviously something retains the water. You fill up your bath, the walls of the bath retain the water. And it's exactly the same with, you know, the waters of the ocean. You know, we have... Uh, the ice water. I did see a video. I know it was only four four minutes long, but uh, some some person in their aeroplane somewhere somewhere uh, probably on the coast of Antarctica, you know, and you could see this uh, maybe 100 foot, 150 feet tall ice cliff, you know, going for miles and miles and miles. Um, so, you know, I, I that's what that's what I tend to I tend to think. One thing I would say, and that is. Um, the sun's movement, okay, uh, above us, is conducive with the azimuthal flat earth map in that it goes around and oscillates in between the two, um, the two tropics, tropics of Cancer, Cancer and Cop Capricorn, yeah? Okay, so it goes out, which gives us our, our winter, so it goes out to the top of Can Capricorn, sorry, and then it moves in over the equator and then towards the Tropic of Cancer to give us our summertime because the sun's nearer to us. So that's 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 conducive with what I observe. Okay. That that is definitely conducive with what I observe. Yeah. If anything drops, we can just leave it, it'll make less of a noise. Sorry, lads. Um, so we're just we're just doing an interview here, lads. So if you could just use the phone. Okay, that's easier. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. That was our It's fine. So oh, I have to turn it on because you're going to be so interesting. It's quite interesting. Um. So. Um. I'm sorry. I'm sort of broken my 
trying to concentrate on that. Um, so, um, what are the con continents be in the same? I don't know. Cinema? I don't know. You see, one thing I've learned over the past few years, and that is, no map is accurate. We see uh, when we see the, the ball Earth. Um, it's just, and when we sort of see the rectangular map, you know, they're, they're, to me they're just projections. That's all they are. The, the, azimuth, the azimuthal equidistant flat earth map, that is just a projection. Um, so, and no, project, no projection is accurate. Um, it's very difficult to produce an accurate map of the earth. You know, you're, you're talking vast distances, you're talking phenomenal manpower in order to collect all of the data you've got to go to some treacherous places as well um, so, and you know i know people may have the technology because we've got um you know we've got radio transmissions and all this kind of stuff you know all over the earth but you know it's it's, it's gaining that information and then it's giving it to the people this is the thing you know i don't have the money to pay loads of people to you know to to do this and get all the information for them you know i don't have that but um, I, I would say, I, I would say, I'd say maybe roughly. I mean, I don't know. There could be, there could be another landmass somewhere that I don't even know. You don't even know. I mean, who knows? So, what do you believe is, that, is beyond the ice? I don't know. Yeah. Some people, some people think that it just goes on for, forever. Yeah. Infinity, infinite plane, they call it. Um, some people think that uh, there are other lands beyond that. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. You know, one thing I would say, and that is, in my understanding, because the sun, you know, goes around uh, the tropics, so the furthest out it will, it'll orbit will be above the Tropic of Capricorn. So, that, so the more you move away from that that Tropic of Capricorn, south as it were, because south is in all directions, the darker it's going to get. Obviously, because you're moving away from the sun. You use the word orbit, but that seems to be quite a... Well, orbit, I mean, as in encircle, you know, orbit as in move around, that, that, you know, move so, around. So it sort of goes in a circular motion? Yeah, a circular motion just above, just above the Earth, you know, you know. But the, the, the more you move away from the Tropic of Capricorn, the darker it gets. Now, how... Is it possible for human beings to survive in total darkness? Can you imagine being 2,000 miles away from the sun? You know, when it's uh, and there's it's darkness, you're 2,000 miles. I don't know whether you can relate to this. So the sun's moving over the tropic of Capricorn, which is the one at the south, I believe. I understand. So you're at Antarctica already. So you're already so many thousand. You're maybe about a thousand miles away from that. I don't know the exact figure. But then you you're 3,000 miles away. 4,000. It's going to get darker. Yeah. So can you survive? Would you be able to survive? I don't think anyone could. Total, t t total pitch blackness. I mean, I don't know. I've never been there, but that's what I would, you know, going on, you know, going on certain things. That's that's what I, I, I would think. Could be wrong. Who knows? You know, we need to be there too. But I, I'm not going to go. There. It's too cold. <laughs> you know, I've got better things to do in the time. Um, so, why do you think flat Earth has become more popular in? Now that is a good question because it, ever since 2015, there's been a kind of like an, an upsurge, you know, in people researching flat Earth. It's phenomenal. And go on Facebook and YouTube, and loads of people are kind of like down this, you know, down this flat Earth. Lots of people are talking about it. Lots of people are discussing it. Um, I, th I think personally, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, I can't talk. I can't speak for everyone, obviously, but. I think, pe personally, people are just getting fed up with the globe society. Pe people are getting disenchanted with it. People are getting disappointed with it. Um, and you know, I look, I look at, I look at this society I live in. You know, you know, it's rather disappointing. You know, I very rarely see a happy face. And a lot of people around here are miserable, unhappy. You know, you go out and you get served by people, um, and they say, "You're right there." You think, oh, it's, that's, you know, what's wrong with, can I help you? You know, it's, it's that kind of interaction. It's, it's the disappointment people have in p other people. And I think that is the main driving force in people wanting to research the flowers. Because it's, 
because it's uh, making people realise that you know they're more important than all of this rubbish that other people are just chucking at them, you know, all of the time. You know, um, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's what I would think. Yeah, I, I, that's just my opinion. But you know, there's a lot on the website actually about uh, what you think will happen when more people embrace um, yeah. uh, flat Earth. Yeah. They said something about politicians being cast down from their roles. Politicians being cast down? From their... From their, from their positions. Positions of the Well, there is a... I was told that over in America there's a flat earth group who are starting a political party. Now, you know, over in America these things can happen, but mm -hmm. over in this country we're, we're under the rule of a monarchy, OK? It's Her Majesty's government, not our government. Um, so, you know... I, you know, I, I'm, I'm unsure. I don't. I'm unsure. There's, there's, there's a strong force to keep the globe alive. A very strong force to keep the globe alive. If you understand, I mean, I'm not religious, but I understand the religious concepts that they use. Because it's all it, it's, to me, religion is just a code, okay. And if you follow Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah Witnesses would say Satan rules the, the world. Satan rules the world. Um, I, I tend to think that, um, you know, you, you're up against, the globe is run by some, uh, could we say evil people, maybe, I don't like using the term, but, you know, there's good intent there to have the globe earth, believe you me, there's good intent. But, you know, I tend to think, you know, with all of the, all of the suffering and injustice people endure on, an, on a day-to-day -day level, you know, people going to work, they're not feeling well, why is that people not getting paid the same as someone who does less work than this person? There's so much unfairness in this society. Um, I, I tend to think that, um, you know, uh, you know I, I just tend to think that, uh, yeah, I forgot the question. I forgot my line of thought as well. Yeah, it was, um, why do you think flat earth theory has become so popular? Oh yeah, I already mentioned. I already answered that. Okay. That was the that was the dis people oh, just yes. disappointed. What do, you, what do you expect will happen if? Oh um, yeah, sorry yeah. Uh, well, to be honest with you, it's down to the people who are, who who are pushing forward this globe society, the globe. And I mean, it's down to them because they could they could basically cut all flat earth videos from YouTube. Yeah, they could they could they could do an awful lot. I mean, I'm to be honest with you, I'm surprised that flat earth videos. Are, um, have gotten to the point where there's so many on YouTube and Facebook, there's loads of them everywhere, on the internet, it's thriving. I'm surprised it's, it's gotten out, you know, because, uh, you know, if you're, we, in this society we have this thing called censorship, so any truth, you know, so let's say we're, we're, at, uh, we're, we're in the, we're at a committee, part, politicians committee, and we say, oh no, that, should, that can't get out, we can't get that out. See, this is the society we live in. We live in a society where truths are, what's the word? They're not told. Yeah. This is the, which is, you know, what's wrong with that? You know, if somebody, if somebody's sexually abused a child. Who cares? That's their business. Do you know what I mean? It's their. They should be punished. What's wrong with being open about it? What's wrong with educating children about sexual abuse? What's wrong with um, educating people about love, relationships? When I was at school, I got nothing. Okay, this is the society that um, maybe, maybe I thought was responsible for my well-being and my welfare. Obviously not, because it's not made me a happy person. So you know, it's, it's the disappointment, and it, the people who hold hold the keys, as it were, up top. You know, you know, I think it's it's down to them where flat earth goes because they've got the. If, I don't want to use the word, but they've got the power to, to either quash it and, you know, do all this thing. You know. But saying that, life is all about a balance. You've got to have a balance in society. And so you've got the globe earth being pumped in schools and all these education establishments. We, we love the ball. You know, I can understand that. You know. But you've got to have a balance. So having these flat earthers around, coexisting as it were, will help fill that balance so you know but we'll have to wait and see you know I mean this time next year who knows you know you might go on YouTube or Facebook and there's no mention of that I don't know you know
Is that good? If you'd like to say anything, um, if you'd like to say anything else, um, uh, let me think now. Um, let me think now. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll think, yeah. I think you might have said something about um, a belief system behind the. Yeah. The globe theory. Yeah. Um, this is this is my understanding. Okay. Having spoken or you know exchanged lots of comments with globe people. And talking to a lot of people who, th who think glue, you know, I've not in nearly three years of doing um, flat Earth and researching the globe, I've not seen one shred of evidence, not one shred of evidence that would actually convince me into thinking that the Earth is a ball. It's definitely a ball, not one. One would have thought in the year 2018, 2018, with all the technology we've got, yeah, okay, the Transport, you know, the transportation, the radio transmissions, all of the knowledge we know, that our, 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 our knowledge base and everything, what we do in universities and schools and education, all this stuff. Where's the evidence? Somebody should be able to come here. There. And I go, oh, right, yeah, sorry, I've got it all wrong. Not one person's been able to do that in three years. Yeah. They can't even explain and demonstrate how water sticks, how all the waters of the oceans, you're talking trillions of gallons, trillions, can stick to this spinning ball. 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, spinning round. Um, the, the, the Earth rotates, okay, allegedly. There's no evidence, okay, no evidence. But allegedly the Earth rotates. The atmosphere rotates along with the Earth, okay. So a plane flying from, and it rotates, sorry, it rotates this way, this way. So a plane flying this way should reach its destination quite quickly, yeah? If it's flying from east to west, it should reach its destination quickly, as opposed to a flight going this way, okay? Because the destination is moving away from you, yeah? But I've been online uh, pretty much the same, okay? Then I was told planes fly as if the Earth doesn't rotate. Uh, no, I'm just a human being trying to understand this. You know, I understand that people are giving me a load of, you know, poo poo. Yeah. The good thing about it all is, is that so it's moving, rotating. The sun's over here. The atmosphere is rotating, and yet planes fly as if the Earth's not rotating, and yet. Full call pendulum, okay, pendulum, okay, that, can, that is allegedly free to swing, even in a, um, a circular motion, moves like this, okay, can swing around, okay, as it rotates backwards and forwards. How on earth is that able to pick up the Earth's rotation when the Earth and the atmosphere rotate along in unison, as if it doesn't rotate? Tell me. I'll end it on that because that, that, you know, you can see that there is a con conflicting information by, by the p very people who are saying to me that the Earth's a ball, we're living on a ball. You know, it's like somebody saying to me, I go to one school, they're saying to me, two and two equals four. Go to somewhere else, another school, they're saying to me, two, two plus two equals five. You know, what am I supposed to think? You know, they need to get their information straight. But they can't because the earth is flat. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll end it there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Thanks for coming along. I'll, I'll the earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere, it's flat.